This video is brought to you by Azam Sharp School. You can go to azamsharp.school to find out one of the largest catalogs for iOS development videos. Let's go ahead and check out some courses. You can see that on Azam Sharp School, you can find courses about MVVM design pattern, core data, MV pattern, full stack iOS development, reactive programming, even Swift data and server driven UI, create ML, trust him in development, reality kit, and many more. And there are also workshops. These will be live workshops accessible to everyone. The pricing is just insanely low, only $50, and you get two to three hours of live workshop on Zoom about Vapor, and then you have Swift data fundamentals, and even unit testing. So go to adamsharp.school, and learn iOS development. Our next task is to allow the user to add a new list. And for that, we need to add a new view called the add new list view. I'm just gonna go ahead and create a new group called views and try to put all of my views inside the views folder. Okay, let's go ahead and close this out. Let's see if it works. Okay, inside the view folder, I can go ahead and add a new file, which will be a Swift UI file. And we will call it add new list view. This view is going to allow us to add a brand new list. Okay, so what do we need in when we're creating this kind of a add new list view? Well, we'll start with the vstack so that we can organize our items in a vertical fashion. Next step, we will have to create some way for the user to enter the name, okay? So I'm just gonna go ahead and copy some code over here. Nothing crazy, nothing complicated. And we will go ahead and check this out. So we need a text field, which is going to take the name of a particular list so I'm gonna go ahead and add a name property. There we go. And let's see how it actually looks like. Okay, it looks actually pretty good. You can see right now that the image, which is right there, is of default color, which is black. And we will eventually change that. Let's go ahead and change it to, to green for now. But it will be based on whatever the user selects. All right, so we need some way for the user to to select a particular color, just like in the Reminders app, okay? Let's go ahead and also add a bit of padding. You can see that we have added padding and we have added the clip shape, so that all is going good. Let's go ahead and add spacer, so everything is kind of moved on the top a little bit, okay? Another thing that we need to do is do we need to allow the user to select a color. So we need some sort of a color picker or color control that is displayed with different options. I have already created the color picker control. So let's go ahead and add a new view. And it's called the color picker view. There we go. And in the color picker view, I'm going to go ahead and simply add some code and we'll go over it. Okay. So you can see that this is how it actually looks like. This is the color picker control. And you can see that it's gonna start with selected color, which is a binding. This means that you are going to pass in the selected color as a binding so that the parent can get notified when you change the selected color. We have a list of colors over here. You can add more if you want. Then we go through each color and we simply create these circles, okay? Whenever we tap on a color, we select the selected color. And if the selected color is the one that you selected, then we are going to affect like a gray color border around it, okay? So that is pretty much what's going on in this. Nothing crazy. And now we can start using it in our add new list view. So the only thing we need to do is to go back to our add new list view and simply add it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add this right over here before the spacer. 
We also need to declare the selected colored state variable that we can pass in. And let's see if it refreshes. There we go. So it looks much nicer now. You can see that. And we can select a color. And whenever we select the color, the selected color state, which is defined on line number 13, gets updated with the new colors. All right, so this looks great. The other thing that we need to add, some other things we need to add, is we need to make sure that the user is able to create or cancel or close this particular dialogue, this particular modal, or the user will be able to save it. So let's go ahead and add a couple of different things. I'm gonna go ahead and say that this particular view, which is a stack view, is going to be maximum. So it's gonna take up the whole screen. So that's why we're calling it infinity and infinity for the maximum width and height. The other thing we're going to do is we're gonna do the background color. So I'm just gonna say background color for now, background. And I don't know if we even need that, the background color for right now. So I'm just gonna leave it for now. That's okay, we don't really need it at this particular moment. Let's go ahead and add a toolbar so that we can add some toolbars on the top. The first toolbar or the first thing we're gonna add is uh, some sort of a text in the toolbar. All right, that will be kind of like displayed in the middle. Now, right now you can't really see the toolbar because in the preview, we are not really using the toolbar. So what you can do is simply go ahead and wrap this with a navigation view so that the toolbar will appear on the top. And now you can see our heading, which is new list, which is what we added right there. The other thing we need to do is to add a toolbar button, which will allow us to close this particular modal. Now, the closing part is done by the dismiss function, which we need to get from the environment values. So here we go. We get the environment and we get access to the dismiss and now we can dismiss it. Great. The final thing that we need to do is the actual done button. So I'm just gonna go ahead and select that, change this to done. And instead of leading, we can call it trailing so that it appears on the right hand side. And that's pretty much it. The only thing that is left to do is that the done button should not be available right now because I haven't really written anything over here. So I need to validate that if my form is correct or not, or I shouldn't be able to press a done button unless and until I entered something in the text box. But right now it is enabled. So we need to make sure that doesn't happen. So let's go ahead and add some validation, private, var is form valid, boolean. And the form will be valid if the name is not empty, simple. And we can go back to the button and we can say that the button will be disabled if the form is not valid. So now you can see that the button automatically is disabled. If I type something over here, then the button becomes enabled, okay? And that's pretty much it. We don't really have to do anything inside over here in the button, yet we obviously need to save it. So save the, you know, save it into the database. So this will be save the list, okay? Now this particular view, which is the add new list view will not be responsible for saving it by itself. It is going to delegate the saving part to someone else. So this means that we can add a closure, which can help us with that. So I'm gonna add a closure, which is going to say on save, it's gonna pass in the name of the list that you're trying to save and the color associated with the list. So the name of the list can be groceries and the color can be blue, okay? Let's go back at the bottom. You can see it's now complaining because I'm not really passing that. So let's satisfy our, this thing over here. And we don't really care anything about this in the preview, so I'm just gonna pass in like nothing over here, empty, okay? And the final thing we need to do is we need to call this particular closure. So I can simply go ahead and call it over here on save and passing in the name of the list and passing in the selected color. Now, one of the things you will note about the selected color 
is that it's not really going to work over here because the selected color is of type color and we need to pass in a UI color. So we need to somehow convert the selected color to UI color, which is pretty easy because you can simply go ahead and pass in the selected color in the UI color initializer and that's gonna convert it for you, okay? So this looks great. The only thing remaining from a UI perspective is that we go back to our content view and we should probably present it to the user because right now it's not really going to be presented. I mean, you know, there is there should be a way that we can click a button and show that add new uh, list view. Since we are here, if you want, you can even change the name of the content view to something else. Uh, I can go ahead and probably refactor the name and I can call it home view. If you like content view, that is also fine. I'm just gonna rename this to home view and I'm just gonna call it home view. Okay. And let's see if the our Xcode preview kind of picks up, it's still working. Meanwhile, we can go ahead and add a couple of different things over here. Uh, we can add a navigation stack, which will allow us with the navigation. So let's go ahead and add a navigation stack. Navigation stack, there we go. In the navigation stack, we can add a V stack. And over here, we can say hello world or something. It doesn't really matter at this point. We don't really have much going on in the navigation stack, okay? All right, so now the question comes that how are we going to allow the user to basically add something, right? How can we allow the user to add a new reminder? So for that, I am just going to go ahead and add a very simple button for now, right over here at the bottom. You can see that we don't really have a is presented property. Is presented is a state variable. So we are going to go ahead and declare that. And let's see if it shows up. Okay, there it is. You can see the add list property or add list is actually showing up. You can kind of like throw it down at the bottom if you want to. There we go. So what will happen when we press the button? Well, is presented is going to turn into true right? And what we want to do when it turns into true is we want to display some sort of a modal sheet. So we will say over here dot sheet is presented and the content that we want to show will be with the navigation view. We are going to show add new list view and we have to implement the save function, the on save. We're going to get the name, we're going to get the color, and somehow we're going to save the list to the database. All right. And make sure that this is a binding expression. There we go. Okay, great. So at least we have our UI. Hopefully it should be ready. Let's go ahead and click on the add list. You can see that it shows up the add list view. I can close it. I can open it again. I can select different things. Well, one of the things we can actually do over here just to make it better is whenever I select one of these color options, this part should update. So this should be simple. Let's go back to our add new list view. You can see that right now we have hard coded it to green. Well, how about if we simply say selected color? That should probably solve our problem, right? Let's go back to our home view and try it out. And there we go, it looks much nicer now. What about if I add something over here and I say done. Okay, we're going back to the home view. That model goes back. And now it is our responsibility to actually save the list to the database. So that is something that we still have to do. But at least we have our user interface ready to take into account for all of those things, all right? So in the next video, we'll be learning about how to persist the list into the database.